Hello guys and welcome to TGN, the game nerd, the show where I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing Undertale. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and did the boss fight with Papyrus. We of course got him to decide to spare us. And in this episode, we're going to actually go out on a date with him. So that's awesome. Just got to warp all the way over to the other side and here he is. So you came back to have a date with me. You must be really serious about this. I'll have to take you someplace really special. A place I like to spend a lot of time. My house. So yeah, now we're in Papyrus' house. There's a few things that I want to talk about in here. This is my brother's pet rock. He always forgets to feed it. As usual, I have to take responsibility. The rock is covered in sprinkles. It's a dirty sock with a series of notes on it. Sans, please pick up your sock. Okay. Don't put it back down. Move it. Okay. You moved it two inches. Move it to your room. Okay. And don't bring it back. Okay. It's still here. Didn't you just say not to bring it back to my room? Forget it. <laughs> so an interesting little thing is, uh, you know what, I'll go ahead and examine the other stuff first. Oh, it's my favorite game show. It says stay tuned for a new program, MTT. What? It's, un it's usually better than this. This is just a bad episode. Don't judge me. <laughs> you touch the couch. It makes a jangling sound. You find a bunch of loose coins inside the couch. You got 20G. It's a joke book. Take a look inside. Inside the joke book was a quantum physics book. You look inside. Inside the quantum physics book was another joke book. You look inside. There's another quantum physics book. You decide to stop. So I want to talk to Papyrus real quick. Welcome to scenic my house. Enjoy and take your time. Now right over here we have his kitchen. And if we walk into it, he runs over to us. Now, if we go ahead and keep walking in and out over and over, he'll get faster. And if we go ahead and talk to him again. Wow, being a good host is a real workout. So yeah, that's something interesting. I didn't even know about that in my first couple of playthroughs, but yeah. That's the trash can. Feel free to visit it any time. <laughs> My brother always goes out to eat, but recently he he tried baking something. It was like a quiche, but filled with a sugary non-egg substance. How absurd. There's an empty pie tin inside the stove. Uh -huh. Interested in my food museum? Please peruse my culinary art show. Half of the fridge is filled with containers all labeled spaghetti. The other half contains nothing but empty bags of chips. Okay, this sink right here. It has a lot of stuff to it that you wouldn't even know from playing the PC version, so I'll go into that in a second, but first if we examine it. Impressed? I increased the height of my sink. Now I can fit more bones under it. Take a look-see. What? Catch that meddling canine. Curses. Sand, stop plaguing my life with incidental music. Okay, I, I just want to run through... That was a funny scene, by the way. For some reason, this sink has so much weird stuff to it. I'll go ahead and just talk about it in post. Alrighty, so this is quite an interesting sink. You can go ahead and read about more of this on the cuttingroomfloor.net uh, version differences for this game but basically you know like we just saw in the PC version of this game which is the one I'm playing the only use for that sink is just for that gag and that's it however in the PlayStation 4 release of this game they added something extra where I believe you can go inside of the sink and in there is this place called the Dog Shrine, which just has a picture of that dog that we just saw earlier that ran off with a bone. And you can donate 
to the shrine and it keeps giving you like cool things in the room and gives you incentives to continue donating and then once you've donated a ton of money it's basically like hey there was no point to this you kind of wasted a lot of money <laughs> uh and then in the nintendo switch release of this game the dog shrine has been completely destroyed and in the back is this uh doll which i'm kind of getting ahead of myself so it's not really spoilers, but there's a character from a thing that'll be mentioned in the future being possessed by a thing that we'll see in the future. And you can fight the doll and then uh, spare it and then something will change in the ending. Uh, and then in the Xbox One version, I believe both of these are replaced by the dog casino which is basically just you can play the slots and earn new stuff for the room that's completely different from the stuff from the dog shrine so uh yeah very weird sync alrighty back to the game a classic image it always reminds me of what's important in life the door is locked so yeah we have uh Sans's room right here with fire underneath it and there's a way to unlock it uh, When it becomes important, I'll let you know how to unlock it. It's not like a thing you need to do It's just a fun little Easter egg Finally, we have papyrus's room That's my room if you finished looking around we could go in and do whatever people do when they date Go inside sure Hey, those are all the attacks I'd use on you. Great memories, huh? Seems like it was only yesterday, even though it basically just happened. The internet. I'm quite popular there. I'm just a dozen away from a double-digit digit follow account. Of course, fame is a steep price. A jealous troll has besieged my online persona, always sending me bad puns in a goofy font. I forgot to mention that, uh... Sans and Papyrus's names are puns on fonts uh, because we have Papyrus, the font, which Papyrus talks in, and we have Comic Sans. And Sans is known for making bad puns, so he's Comic Sans. There are no skeletons inside my closet, except me sometimes. Look in the closet. Clothes, clothes are hung up neatly inside. I, I almost tried to do the narration in Papyrus's voice for some reason. <laughs> that book's one of my favorites. Advanced puzzle construction for critical minds. That next book's another one of my favorites. Peekaboo with Fluffy Bunny. The ending always gets me. Isn't that Flagnito? Undyne found it at the bay. I think it's from the human world. Now I know what you're thinking. Why would a human flag have a cool skeleton on it? Well, I have a theory. I think humans must have descended from skeletons. <laughs> ah, yes, action figures. A great reference for theoretical battle scenarios. How do I have so many? Well, let's just say they are from a chubby, smiling man who loves to surprise people. Yeah, that's right. Santa. That's my bed. If I ever get to the surface, I'd like to drive down a long highway. Wind in my hair, sun on my skin. Of course, that's just a dream. So instead, I cruise while I snooze. Also, I just realized that if I'm uploading this at the right time, then I believe this will be my first video of 2023, so that's pretty awesome. So, um... If you've seen everything, do you want to start the date? Begin the date? Yeah. Okay, dating start. Dating start. Here we are on our date. I've actually never done this before. But don't worry, you can spell prepared without several letters from my name. I snagged an official dating rule book from the library. We're ready to have a great time. Let's see. Step 1. Press the C key on your keyboard for the dating HUD. 
So yeah, we have a few references right here. Most of all, my favorite is uh, Big the Cat up in the top left corner. Wowee, I feel so informed. I think we're ready for step two. Step two, ask them on a date. Ahem, human, I, the great papyrus, will go on a date with you. Sure. Really? Wowee. I guess that means it's time for part three. Step three, put on nice clothes to show that you care. Wait a second. Wear clothing. That bandana around your head. You're wearing clothing right now. Not only that, earlier today you were also wearing clothing. No, could it be? You wanted to date me from the very beginning? No, you planned it all along. You're way better at dating than I am. N no, your dating power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think you've bested me yet. I, the great papyrus, have never been beaten at dating, and I never will. I can easily keep up with you. You see, I too can wear clothing. In fact, I always wear my special clothes underneath my regular clothes. Just in case somebody happens to ask me out on a date. Behold! Yeah, what do you think of my secret style? I love it. No, a genuine compliment. However, you don't truly understand the hidden power of this outfit. Therefore, what you just said is invalid. This date won't escalate any further unless you find my secret. But that won't happen. There's no secret to my legs, just hard work and perseverance. This shirt didn't orig originally say cool, but I improved it. Expert tip, all clothing articles can be improved this way. My hat, my hat, my hat. <laughs> well then, you found my secret. I suppose I have no choice. It's a present. A present just for you. Do you know what this is? Spaghetti. That's what you're thinking, isn't it? Right. But oh so wrong. This ain't any plain old pasta. This is an artisan's work. Silken spaghetti finely aged in an oaken cask. Then cooked by me, Master Chef Papyrus. Human, it's time to end this. There's no way this can go any further. You take a small bite. Your face reflexively scrunches up. The taste is indescribable. What a passionate expression! You must really love my cooking, and by extension, me. Maybe even more than I do. Ugh. Ugh. No! Human, it's clear now. You're madly in love with me. Everything you do, everything you say, it's all been for my sake. Human, I want you to be happy too. It's time for me to express my feelings. It's time that I told you. I, Papyrus. I, um, boy, is it hot in here or is it just me? Oh, shoot. Human, I, I'm sorry. I don't like you the way you like me. Romantically, I mean. I mean, I tried very hard to. I thought that because you flirted with me, that I was supposed to go on a date with you. Then on that date, feelings would blossom forth. I would be able to match your passion for me. But alas, I, the great Papyrus, have failed. I feel just the same as before. And instead, by dating you, I have only drawn you deeper into your intense love for me. A dark prison of passion with no escape. How could I have done this to my dear friend? No, wait, that's wrong. I can't fail at anything. Human, I'll help you through these trying times. I'll keep being your cool friend, and act like this all never happened. After all, you are very great. It would be tragic to lose your friendship. So please, don't cry because I won't kiss you, because I don't even have, have lips. And hey, someday, you'll find someone as great as me. Well, no, that's not true. But I'll help you settle for second best. <laughs> Oh, and if you ever need to reach me, here's my phone number. 
You can call me anytime, platonically. Well, got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Now's the date with Papyrus. Pretty entertaining. And also, that thing that he just gave us, his phone number, is something very interesting and one of my favorite parts in the game because at any point you can call Papyrus. Wow, it only took you four seconds to call me. You must be very desperate for my help. Well, do not fear. This is Papyrus's helpful helpline. Just describe your location and I will describe some hot tips. So, where are you? You're still in my room? Have you heard of something called a door? Wait, don't worry, I'll draw a diagram for you. Hold up, I'm still drawing. So, Papyrus, for each and every room in this entire game, has two extra pieces of dialogue. And later on in the game, you'll be able to do something that gives you even more dialogue for each and every room in the game. So let's continue. You are in my house. Good choice. Though I guess it's technically Sans's house too. But I prefer not to discuss that part of it. His room is... It's like another world. A world where they don't know how to vacuum. You are best staying away from that strange place. Snowden, home of Papyrus. That's the slogan, right? I'm petitioning to change the slogan. <laughs> so I'm just going to go around Snowden and get a bunch of different dialogue and then we'll end off the video. I love the library. The books are all arranged by color. This sense of order, it fills me with power. What's a library card? <laughs> Oh, here's something that I wanted to talk about. In a previous episode, I think it was episode 5, uh, I came by here and I said that I was going to explain this later. Actually, I think I'm going to have a Papyrus explain it for me. That fairy person throws ice all day. Nobody knows where it goes. Hypnotizing, isn't it? So, I forgot... He's. It's, it's actually going to be explained later what this guy is doing, so we'll come back for that. I forget if Papyrus has dialogue for this part. There's no response. Okay, so for those screens, Papyrus doesn't have any dialogue. Grill bees. It's dark and full of grease. Purgatory of fries, hamburger, abyss. Anyway, my brother practically lives here. Okay. I'm not coming to grill bees. Okay, so that's good to know that whenever you leave a room, uh, you can come, you can uh, come back to it, and if you want to reset the dialogue, if you ac accidentally skipped through it. The inn's a great place to stay. The lady who runs it is really nice. She always gives me a lollipop and a pat on the head. Why are you calling me? Are you trying to make a reservation? <laughs> This bridge looks dangerous, but it's very stable. In fact, it's just a rock formation I painted over. I think it looks more dramatic that way. He did a really good paint job on this. But yeah, he gives you a lot of extra dialogue that you would have never gotten if you just didn't decide to go back. I added the rope too. Hmm. Oh, new person over there. A station of greater dog. He looks a bit like a certain dog I don't like, but Greater Dog doesn't collect anything. He's only a kleptomaniac for affection. He's amassed a large collection of hugs and pets. That's adorable. Also, this guy is new. We all live in the woods, so no one can tell us what to do. But now everyone ignores us. I don't want freedom if it means no one's going to pay attention to me. I always jump over the gap instead of solving the puzzle. Sans never solves it either. He always just, um, gets across. So yeah, we have another mention of, you remember how in episode 3, I believe it was, how Sans said he was going to go right, but went left instead. 
interesting how that works. How he'll be able to get somewhere by going the opposite direction. I think he has a shortcut or something. Exactly that. But yeah, I'm surprised that... Well, I guess I'm not really surprised that Papyrus was able to jump over the gap. Gift Trot lives near there. They like gifts. Don't worry if you can't afford something nice. It's the thought that counts. So imagine you have a lot of money. <laughs> Did you meet Gift Trot? Let's go ahead and meet him right over here. I've heard there's a local tradition based off of my own suffering. Jeez. My signal is getting weak. Looks like the phone won't work past here, so there's no reason to go further. Hello. <laughs> we have that little guy down there again. So yeah, I assume that... No response, okay. I wonder what Papyrus has to say about these little snow guys down here, and also we have you. Everyone's wearing hats. Should I branch into a different item? Ice Jorts doesn't have the same ring to it. We were getting bored waiting for you, so I built the snow, Papyrus. And Sans did his thing. Actually, it's one of his better lumps. <laughs> The station of lesser dog. The dog loves to be pet. That's its defining personality trait. Wait, why are they a royal guard and not me? I love to be pet too. Eh, <laughs> it's all just po popul a popularity contest. I see what you did there. Oh ho, the puzzle that Dr. Alfie's made. I had to ask Undyne to ask to her to make one. I only follow her online. I'm not really friends with her. Yet. Someday I'll impress her with my huge biceps. That's a good way to make friends. Oh ho, this puzzle. You figured it out so easily. That was very papyrus of you. <laughs> Talking on the phone. How papyrus of you. I love how he said, oh, you f figured it out so easily, when it's the one where we asked for his hint on it. Heh, <laughs> us teens live self-sufficiently off the fat of the land. Oh, and the box lunch is on my par parents. Oh, and the box lunch is my parents bring us every day. Okay. I thought he said the box lunch is on my parents or something like that. And I was like, hold on. <laughs> Hmm, the solution to this one? I actually just stepped over the spikes. So the solution is to be very tall and handsome. So yeah, I guess... Hold on, I forgot the other... I'm solving it as we speak. <laughs> this room is, a normally blocked, is normally blocked by those spikes. But we're thinking of getting them rid of them. The king released a mandate on puzzles recently. He thinks spikes are ineffective has and hazardous to kids. But I think he's wrong. Kids love deadly spikes. If you know any kids, you should ask them. Hey, stop thinking about my hat. You aren't thinking about my hat? Can you please? <laughs> This game has a lot of hilarious dialogue. That's the last time I'll say it, I swear. But it's true. This game is very well written. So I'd suggest playing this game for yourself. And, you know. Ah, the spaghetti trap room. Well, I guess it's not much of a trap anymore. Since you ate the whole thing, right? Nothing like a hot bucket of spaghetti Or of spug. Hmm, crossword. I guess it's an apt name. Those words make me cross. Are you still looking at that word search? The famous Snowden Snowball game. Fast, faster completion gives different prizes. Where does the money come from? The snowball tax, of course. 
What? You've never heard of a snowball tax? The surface world must be paradise. <laughs> Us teens rule these woods with a smaller than adult fist. Th this game has so much funny dialogue. I. The station of the married dogs. Hmm, do you ever think about doing that someday? Marrying a dog? Yeah, that's weird. There are way better animals to marry. Like skeletons. <laughs> oh ho, the electric maze. That sure was fun. Except for when I got shocked. Disappointing, but I turned off the electricity. Alrighty, so we could just walk through here. Careful, the ice is slippery. But if you slide on the ice, no one will attack you. No one wants to... to... Pratt fall during a cool technique. So I guess that's... This game has an explanation for pretty much everything in the game. It must be tough being a snowman. Trying to be nice to people made of strange materials. Is that snowman still there? I think I forgot the... yeah. I'm cold. I'm cold out of things to say. So yeah, Papyrus likes puns too, even though he doesn't like to admit it. The station of the doggo. He has the amazing power to see things when they move. Okay, maybe it's not an amazing power. Doggo's not home. Oh, it says out to lunch. As if the paper was moving while it was written. That's great. He has to move around the paper as well in order to see what he's writing. There's some narration on this cardboard box. Okay, yeah, I already... Yeah, <laughs> impressed? Not only am I great at puzzles, but I'm also an esteemed architect. My brother... My bro my brother helped me find the box. I've been doing a bit of a different Papyrus voice uh, throughout this episode, whereas before he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm the great Papyrus. Now I've been doing more of a, hello there, human. How is it going? A lot less high-pitched and weird. I ran away from home. Why? Because my father was so cold to me. What? It's a joke. Laugh at it. I really don't. I don't care if he doesn't like my jokes. What? Are you lost? Hmm, you should try calling someone for help. Huh? Why are you calling me? It's too cold to swim in the river. Unless you have a waterproof sweater. It's just a river. This is where my brother is supposed to patrol. But every time I show up, he's slacking off. It's a good thing I spotted you first. I'm sure you would have made a weird first impression. Oh... <laughs> oh, he did. If he's not around, he won't come back. That's just the way he functions. And I guess this is the... last screen? Because I don't... Oh, wait. There might be one other screen over here. It depends on whether the exit to the ruins is connected to this or not. This is a very long walk. It was used to make tension in the game, but now... Alrighty. Last talk with Papyrus. Hmm, a strange door in the woods. Actually, my brother spends a lot of time here. What's he doing? I've got to keep him on the straight and narrow. Are you still around that door? Oh no, my brother's a bad influence. So that's interesting, Sans spends a lot of time around this door. But yeah, in this episode we went ahead and we went on a date with Papyrus and we went around pretty much every screen we've been in so far except of course for the ones in the ruins, but we can't go back there. So yeah, I think this is a good spot to go ahead and end off the episode. I don't know if this will be a bit shorter of an episode or how long this will be because I'll be 
cutting out a lot of stuff, which mostly just me walking around. So if I had to guess it, this will probably be close to like a 18 minute episode. So that's about a decent length. Uh, I'll go ahead and do my outro while I'm walking back to Snowden Town. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and continue on past Snowden and see what else there is to find there. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.